For the last two weeks here at First Christian Church, we've heard two of the most well-known stories from Scripture, two stories that, in one case, Jesus tells, and in another case, a story about Jesus' interaction with his friends, Mary and Martha. The story of the Good Samaritan we heard two weeks ago, and then last Sunday we talked about the story of the sisters, Mary and Martha, and their relationship with their friend Jesus. And then this Sunday, we'll actually hear from the next chapter and hear a piece of scripture that is definitely the best known worldwide because it contains the Lord's Prayer or Luke's version of the Lord's Prayer, which if you go to Luke 11, you'll see may be quite different or different enough to be strange from what we say in church every Sunday and that so many Christians say on a regular basis. It includes, of course, the famous phrase, Give us this day our daily bread. And that is consistent. That central phrase is consistent in Luke, in the Gospel of Matthew, where it's also recorded in a slightly different form, and in all the versions that Christians pray and have prayed for 2,000 years. One of the earliest documents we have from the church suggests that Christians pray the Lord's Prayer three times a day. So three times a day we are asking God to give us our daily bread. And that harkens back to a story from the very beginning parts of the Bible, the second book of the Bible in Exodus, in which the Israelites who have escaped slavery in Egypt are wandering through the desert. And at that point, they in fact call on Moses and ask, wasn't it better for us to stay slaves? Wouldn't it be better for us to stay slaves? Because at least in slavery, we knew we would have three square meals a day, or at least have consistent food. Three meals is a modern Thing that we do now. But they call on Moses asking, shouldn't we have just stayed in slavery? And God answers their anxiety and their fear about hunger with this miraculous food called manna. And the manna comes and it appears on the bushes at dawn. And when you gather it, you can have enough for the day, but you can't store it for the next day. In fact, it rots and molds if you try to keep it overnight, except on the sixth day. Because on the sixth day of the week, you can gather twice as much, and it'll keep over the day of rest, the Sabbath. And so this image that Jesus harkens back to, which is so central in the story of our faith, and of course for him as a Jew, the story of his people's identity, that this bread that is given daily, this miraculous food that comes from God, represents all that God gives us. And in our world today, we often fear that we will lose or not have enough. Even though in our country, many of us, most of us live with so much more than human beings have ever conceived to be possible. In fact, many of us struggle with eating too much. And yet at the same time, one in eight children in our country are hungry. How can that be? How can we both have more than we've ever had before and yet not enough? And Jesus' answer, I think, would be that we don't ask and think in terms of abundance, the way that God's people are called to, both in those stories from the First Testament and in the story in the prayer that Jesus teaches us, teaches his disciples. Give us this day our daily bread. What do we have that's enough? Do we have enough? And then also, do others have enough? How do we understand what enough is and understand that there is enough in this world for everyone if we could just actually focus on need and actually focus on simplicity? So these things that kind of shift what we mean by abundance and what we mean by wealth and by treasure are things we'll be talking about this coming Sunday and for the next three weeks as we talk about abundance and talk about stewardship and how do we take care of the treasures God has given us, our daily bread, and so many other things that God has gifted us in this world. How are we faithful, both in giving and in receiving? How are we good stewards of what God provides? That's a question we'll talk about, and I hope will help us think more about how we use God's gifts in our church and in our lives.